John Smith. Corin Wilson has got so many positives to draw from the way he got here. As for John Higgins, well, I'm afraid the only way is down. He can't play any better than he did against Selby. It's just a matter of fact. Yes, I am. doing it now. Came into First frame. New York City girl, John Higgins, to break. John Higgins, as he's been doing all week. In fact, he was all, almost a, a New York City boy himself because his parents for a while lived in New Jersey. Now. But he's a, a proud Scot and talking of which, so are you, Alan. Yeah, sure, I mean, what a match, what a semi-final. We've got in prospect the winner, obviously, to meet the great Ronnie O'Sullivan all day tomorrow. Oh, wow. <laughs> The drop safety down this corner was no good. So why not press and take the red on? What a shot. Uh, this black is tricky. Try almost some more. Black over pocket. What's more? Higgins to the table with a glint in his eye. seen a few times in this tournament as we do all tournaments this type of shot very difficult to pick your spot positionally to see whether the red goes to Eight. left middle tells us that John didn't play for it in there because obviously he would have if he did play for that he would have known by now fortunately it does so no problem Everyone, understandably, was talking about the, the harshness 16. of his match play against Mark Selby. But the fact remains, he's had four centuries in this tournament so far. Scored nicely, although there, just slightly short of where he oh. intended. Seventeen. Tricky shot, this blue. It's one of those with a cue ball close to object ball. It's so important you commit to the line that you pick. Don't second guess yourself. <laughs> and 
And this has worked out perfectly, actually, by hitting it as thick as that. He's held on to this red a little more easily than had the blue gone into the middle of the pocket. Twenty-three. Not his favourite piece of equipment, but hasn't he handled those two shots nicely now? Cushion, bit of pace into the bunch. Not easy to get the cue ball releasing off these reds. It's bound to stick in there. Might be looking at hoping to get a red to middle. Yes, the cue ball does stick and oh, missed the pot, but he's been fortunate. While they're involved in the Reds here, we've not just got a, a great snooker match for you tonight, we've also got a, a quiz question. Tweet us, hashtag ITV Snooker with the answer if you want to. The question is, Ronnie O'Sullivan has made the most maximum breaks in professional competition of anyone, 15. But who's the only player to make one in pro competition? against O'Sullivan. The answer will be coming later. Well, I know who it's not. It's not me. <laughs> These two are really nice guys, and how very convenient they had that little safety exchange there so we could get the quiz question out. This area is going to be one of the subplots to this match and one of the most important ones who's going to win these exchanges. You would obviously put John marginal favourite if there is such a thing in safety. It's this all round cleverness and picking the correct spots. I mean, it's something to behold, but I can tell you it's another thing to play against it. He always seems to put you in the most awkward spot. And that was a poor one from Kyron, but that pink's given John a problem. Not playing the pot, playing the one nearest the corner. Right, my mistake. Look, this red needs to travel. Just about has. Uh, being a cagey start. He's okay with this red. Push up and down. There's no double kiss on. 
unless the cue ball got a piece of the knuckle of the middle pocket, which it did. Oh, just avoided it. There were so many parts of the Higgins game that were eye-poppingly good against Selby. One of them was knocking in shot to nothing reds. Like that. One. Fabulous pot. First battle won by the Scotsman. Yeah, this is now a genuine chance, isn't it? Black out of commission and a handy little lead. It's quite a nice table. Four. He just wants to keep that pink spot occupied if he can, John, and get it on the black spot. Problem with the pink, it looks pretty straightforward, doesn't it? But it's thinner than it looks on our screen now. Deep screw using the knuckle, the top knuckle of the middle pocket. Ah, oh, brilliant. Got to be so accurate with that shot. Ten. Yeah, not easy this. I mean, if he chooses pink, he's going to tie it up. I think it will go on its spot. So that'll be no good. That's why he's considering the blue. That's a fantastic shot. See, if you run too hard here, you've got the one to middle. OK, he's got the wrong angle on it. He's 16 to get the one to the corner, but a half a wince tells us he may not be on it. Just get the butt raised. Pink waiting, so that helps the shot. Seven. No problem. Well, it was half a wince 22. a couple of moments ago. I think that was a, a full wince. Unlucky. <clears throat> but a very healthy lead, nevertheless, and there's no one better at protecting a lead 
such as this than John Higgins. John Higgins, 22. He's got that magical, canny way of turning tables into the most awkward situations you can possibly imagine. And a 44-point deficit for a player seems like 144. Yeah, that match against Mark Selby, you could say, is perhaps the most complete performance we've ever seen in any match over best of 11, also considering the quality of his opponent. And where that comes from, obviously, he, he played brilliantly, but he never wastes a shot. Like even that last one, the care and the safety shot to give Kyron a problem. even there okay he misses the red but he plays it at a pace where he's got a chance of getting a good cue ball in bulk the fact that the yellow was in bulk probably dictated the way he played that shot One. Those shot to nothings. Yellow. They're going in on such a regular basis, and then he does something evil like this. Don't Fiendish. looks a bit dicey going that way to get to the red right of the black need to get a nice slide off this second cushion needs to slide and come down the way you see it was difficult to get it south oh, of minutes. well where it's ended John up Higgins and that's why he's left John a decent chance to put paid to this opening frame Every time he's came to the table, he's got a problem to deal with, Kyron. The Higgins quarter-final was so Seven. extraordinary. A new phrase might have entered the snooker lexicon to be selbied. Eight. And in the first frame, Wilson has been selbied. Sort of, sort of start to match this first frame. If you, if you had a look at it again and broke it down, you could say, well, John's not really Fault. done an awful lot. But what he has done, as I said, he gives Kyron something to deal with Fifth. every time. 
and the pressure builds and it builds and you start making little mistakes and John feeds off that. They say 13 is unlucky for some. In this case, Jordan Brown, Mark Selby, and now Karen Wilson. Oh, on the white. Higgins has played oh. 13 Wilson. frames in this 21. tournament, and, and he's won every single one of them. That foul shot, self called, mattered not. Higgins in the groove again. And actually, the foul shot he was guilty of right at the end of the frame. It was only his third foul shot of the tournament so far. He had two early doors in the third frame against Jordan Brown, and he did not commit a single foul against Mark Selby. So many remarkable things about John Higgins, Alan. How about this one? When he first became a member of the elite top 16, Karen Wilson was three. And Higgins has remained in the top 16 ever since. This is 26th consecutive season. Important that this red beats yellow and brown on the way back down as well. Ah, good shot. May have looked straight forward that always late catches yellow or brown. He might leave the red to centre. After John Higgins has played, the cue ball is always, it seems, tucked under a cushion, as if magnetised. A 
this is part of the problem. When you're playing John in this sort of form, he's got you thinking between the devil and the deep blue sea every time you come to the table. Do you press or do you engage in a safety battle with him? Eight. I was thinking about that cue action Nine. thing that we seem to talk about a lot these days. Ronnie talks about it and John has been this week. I think snooker's evolved in the last 25, 30 years where it used to be a lot to do with the quality of the cues of the modern day. See, back then, cues weren't as solid and as regimented as what they are now. So it stands to reason that back then you probably needed 15. a longer sort of bridge hand, a longer cue action. But now you can crowd into the cue ball just a touch more and still get that power off the modern piece of wood. John does it, Kyron's the same. Yeah, Ronnie's still quite long, but not as long as he used to be. With his queuing. Sixteen. All about whether a red will go to the left-hand middle pocket. 22. Twenty-three. One examination passed, another one coming up. Higgins knows if he can float the black in here and obtain prime position. It's a frame-winning chance. Thirty. Those small things make such a big difference, don't they? Even the shot, the blue into the bunch. Or another day, you don't land on one. Likewise, that shot off the black, you play it, you get a piece of the red on the cannon, you land absolutely perfect with nothing to do with the cue ball. I'm not saying it was lucky, it just helps. Thirty-one. 
Higgins playing brilliantly, but Sable playing beautifully. Thirty-nine. Good time to give a shout out to the table fitter Chris Barnes, who's done a wonderful job. Conditions from start to finish this week have been tip-top. Forty-six. It's quite noticeable, actually, even in this visit, John. He's taken his time more than probably I've ever seen him. I think because he's got that different method with his action and everything that goes with that, it gives you that little bit more discipline because you're thinking of a process. You're not playing off the cuff as much. Fifty-three. Frame two then is looking like going the way of John, and it was a pretty straightforward containing safety shot that unlocked the door. It's not so much that Kyron's got to up 54. his game. Not doing much wrong at all. He simply hasn't been given a look at anything. Sixty one. Sixty two. See that sort of saying about John twenty seven seconds a shot. He's been doing most of the scoring. He's careful about everything he's done so far, dear. Feeling his way, working 69. his way into the match and earning the right to perhaps kick on a bit later as the match develops. Seven. Another one bites the dust. Think about this. Two truly world-class players, Mark Selby and now Karen Wilson. 77. In eight frames combined, they've potted four balls against Higgins. 78. In those eight frames, they've scored 12 points combined. Unbelievable, isn't it? The Welsh Open champion didn't score all that many either. 85. 86. Now Higgins is looking for what would be his fifth century of the tournament. 8.30 in pro competition. And it would be his 38th century of the season already eight more than last season that tells you a lot ninety four
Wonderful century. And John. 101. Makes you wonder why a few years ago he was thinking about retiring. <laughs> What's all that about? 102. Now, mathematically, he could tie Barry Hawkins for the high break of the tournament, 1-4-3. Where that red was, though, it was always highly unlikely. 108. John Higgins, 108, and the front. A snooker giant is playing out of his skin.